The Devil's Dance Chamber. Most story of our New World Rivers is the Hudson. Historic scenes have been enacted on its shores, and Indian, Dutchman, Briton, and American have invested it with romance. It had its source in the red man's fancy, in a spring of eternal youth. Giants and spirits dwelt in its woods and hills, and before the river Shatamuk, king of streams, the red man called it, had broken through the highlands, those mountains were pent for spirits who had rebelled against the Manitou. After the waters had forced a passage to the sea, those evil ones sought shelter in the glens and valleys that opened to right and left along its course. But in time of tempest, when they hear Manitou thunderbolts again, riding down the ravine on the wings of a storm, dashing his thunderbolts against the cliffs. It is the fear that he will recapture them and force them into lightless caverns to expiate their revolt that sends them hurdling among the rocks and makes the hills resound with the roars and howls. At the Devil's Dance Chamber, a slight plateau on the west bank, between Newburgh and Crom Elbow, the red men performed semi-religious rites as a preface to their hunting and fishing trips or ventures on the warpath. They built a fire, painted themselves, and in that frenzy in which the savages are so readily lashed, and that is so like to the action of the mobs and trousers, they tumbled, leaped, danced, yelled, sang, and grimaced, and gesticulated until the Manitou disclosed himself either as a harmless animal or beast of prey. If he came in the form or shape, the augury was favorable, but if he showed himself as a bear or a panther, it was a warning of evil that they seldom dared to disregard. The crew of Hudson's ship, the Half Moon, having chanced on one of these orgies, were so impressed by the fantastical spectacle that they gave the name devil's dance comma to the spot. Years afterwards, when Stuyvesant ascended the river, his doughty retainers were horrified on landing below the dance camera to discover hundreds of painted figures frisking there in the firelight. A few surmised that they were but a new generation of savages holding a powwow. But most of the sailors fancied that the assemblage was something otherworldly, and that the figures were spirits of the bad Indians, repeating a scalp dance and reveling in the mysterious fire water that they had brought down from the river source in jars and skins. The spot was at least once profaned with blood, for a young Dutchman and his wife of Albany were captured here by an angry Indian, and although the young man succeeded in stabbing his capture to death, he was burned alive on the rock by the friends of the Indians whose wrath he had provoked. The, uh, the wife, after being kept in captivity for some time, was then ransomed.